giving you guys the picks for UFC coming up next Saturday with uh, Holly Holm and Ketlin Vieira in the main event. And I'm going to do the whole fight card predictions because I know most of you guys like that. And uh, last UFC, Tatsutara, the guy we Japanese kid we took, he pulled through pretty easily, uh, as expected. And I don't know if you guys seen Rakic blew out his knee. Probably the only way Jan Blackwich was going to win that fight was if this guy literally got injured because he wasn't going to knock him out. Getting into those later rounds especially, and he was getting dominated that whole uh, second round, and he was about to get dominated into the later rounds as well. And I just didn't see uh, Jan winning that fight except by injury. And, you know, I don't even remember the last time that's happened. Do you, I don't know if anyone can remember the last time in a main event in the UFC where uh, a fighter blew out his knee. But it is what it is. It's the way she goes sometimes. But uh, let's get on to this UFC card. So first fight, we got Chase Hooper versus Felipe Calaras. So Chase Hooper here, last fight, he's um, he's one in three in his last fights, uh, last th two, four, three fights, sorry. Last fight was to Steven Peterson, I believe. He lost a decision unanimously. Um, it was at a catch weight, though, because I know his uh, opponent missed weight. The thing with Chase Hooper is he's still super young, you know, only 22 years old. Um, I think he's going to do well in the UFC. I just don't think it's right now. It's going to be tough, you know, at this age. And his his fighter, uh, he's fighting Felipe Calares, who's uh, coming off a loss himself to Chris Gutierrez. Split decision. And before that, he beat Luke Sanders. And if I were to bet on it i'd probably take this fight to go over um i'm assuming felipe is probably going to win that by decision but uh it's going to be close because chase hooper has got a pretty significant height advantage and reach advantage so yeah, yeah he could have a hard time with chase hooper's height and reach and you know only 22 years old you never know when uh he's gonna start stepping it up so next fight, we got Jonathan Martinez versus Vince Morales. So Jonathan Martinez is uh, coming off two straight wins. I know before that, he lost to Davy Grant. And he got knocked out. Um, I like uh, Jonathan Martinez. I'm surprised to see that he is um, pretty much like minus 200 against Vince Morales. Vince Morales is a tough dude. He's coming off. Two wins um, himself, uh, knocking out Louis Smolka in his last fight. Before that, uh, decision over Draco Rodriguez. I'm curious to know why uh, Jonathan Martinez is such a big favorite. Uh, I think this fight's going to go the distance. I take the over in this fight. Uh, two tough dudes, I think. I don't think either of them is going to get the knockout in this fight. So I think I'm going to go with over on this one. And next, we got Omar Morales versus Euros Medic, the doctor. Um, it's, going to be a, it's going to be a banger. Omar Morales got choked out his last fight um, by Jonathan Pierce. And... Before that, he won to, won by won a decision, I believe, to Shane Young. And Euros lost his last fight uh, to Jalen Turner. He's like super big for that division, super tall, lanky dude. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a tough one to predict because yeah, this is gonna be a tough one. Um. They got Omar Morales as the favorite. I don't know if I agree with that one. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Euros on this one. The underdog. I'll, I'll take the dog. This fight is going to be a that's going to be a good fight. Now we go for the heavyweights, Jalton Almeida versus Parker Porter. 
Now, this is interesting because uh, Jelton Almeida, actually, he's never fought at heavyweight before. I think this is his first fight moving up. I think he's having a hard time making the 205 division. And Parker Porter is uh, not the greatest fighter. He's He is coming off... Um, Three straight wins, though, but they're not to top guys. There, he beat Chase Herman and Alan Boudou in his uh, his last two. Before that, um, he beat Josh Parisian, and he got. I remember him getting knocked out by Chris Dawkins. But it's uh, curious to see Jalton Almeida. He's a huge favorite, minus seven hundred. So, I mean. No surprise there who who I think is probably going to win this fight. Um, yeah, I mean, Jelton Almeida minus 700. The real question is, is, is he going to finish Parker Porter? Now, that's, that's probably the real bet. And yeah, I'd probably say he is going to finish Parker Porter probably by submission. I know he's a jujitsu guy. And next we got Joseph Holmes versus Alan Amadovsky. So significant height and reach advantage for Joseph Holmes. Um, I like his nickname too, Ugly. Joseph Ugly Holmes suits him because he is an ugly dude. Um, Last fight, he lost to Jamie Pickett. He's not the greatest fighter. Um... Yeah, Jamie Pickett isn't that great. He lost to Kyle Dawkins, I remember, pretty quickly. But it's, um, I guess he is the huge favorite just because of the height and reach advantage. 7 and 2, 8 and 2. Yeah, that's going to be at middleweight as well. Alan Amadovsky, I remember he got knocked out by that guy that Hamza just murdered in the that John Phillips is John Phillips was Hamzat Chemaev's I think first fight in the UFC poor guy and just got murdered by Hamzat but then knocked out Alan Amadovsky in 14 seconds in his last fight uh John Phillips and you guys know I don't like taking guys who just been coming off a vicious knockout loss 14 second knockout loss so I'll probably go with ugly Joseph Holmes on this one now, this is interesting. Eric Anders versus Jun Ong Park. Eric, your boy Anders, he is a pretty big underdog, plus 180, almost a 2-1 to one underdog here against a guy like Jun Ong Park, which is pretty surprising because Jun Ong Park just got knocked out his last fight. But before that, he was on a three-fight winning streak. Eric, your boy Anders, lost to Andre Muniz, who's like just a – Submission machine guy submitted Jacare, which is crazy. Before that, he won to Darren Stewart. Yeah, this is interesting. I think I'm going to go with the over on this this one. And I could see Eric Anders pulling this out. He's a live dog in this one. Eric Anders is a live dog. Yeah, I could see this fight definitely going over as well. But yeah, don't. I guess, that's crazy. Eric Anders such a big underdog. Next, we got Chidi Anjokwani versus Dusko Todorovic. So this is going to be a banger. Both guys like to stand and bang. Um, the Dusko actually was the first and only guy to ever knock out uh, Michelle Pereira. But in his last um, three fights, he's one and three. He did lose that Gregory Rodriguez guy who's pretty good, but... He knocked out Mackie Patolo his last fight. And um, Chidi Anjokwani, if you guys don't know, he's Anthony Anjokwani's uh, brother. His last fight, he knocked out uh, Mark andre Barral in, you know, 15 seconds or something in the first round. That was his uh, first uh, fight back to the area. Oh, yeah, first fight in the UFC, actually, um, was that one. I know he was on the Contender Series, I believe, before that. He fought Mario Souza. So this is going to be a good one. Um, I'm actually surprised Chidi Anjokwani is minus 190. Dusko Todorovic is pretty tough, dude. 
I could see. Yeah, I could see this fight going. Um, Chidi Androquani's way. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Chidi Androquani, but he is a big favorite. And Dusko is pretty good. But uh, I think Chidi should be able to get it done. Um, he's got the intro- big reach advantage. I think he should be able to just stay on the outside, pick him apart. But uh, that's going to be a good one. That's, that's going to be a banger. Now we got Santiago Ponsonibio versus Michelle Pereira. Now this is probably going to be the fight of the night or the fight that everyone's most interested in seeing. Now I used to be I like I'm I used to be a big Santiago Ponsonibio fan. I remember he was like on a seven fight win streak at one point, just knocking people out. Problem is he got into he got a bad knee injury. Um, I believe it was in 2018 after the Neil Magny fight, and then he was out for like three years or something. Came back against uh, Li Jingliang and got just knocked out pretty viciously, and just hasn't looked the same after that. I you know, I know he's one win in his last three fights. He lost to Jeff Neal his last fight. Bit of a lackluster performance in my opinion. Um. Santiago, man, he had, he was a guy who was like on his way to get a title shot and just couldn't get it done. Just that injury just set him back. And then, you know, now he's just fallen way too far behind. And he's taken on Michelle Pereira, who's just a crazy striker. You guys know he does the bull backflips and off the cage uh, stuff. I'm going to go with Michelle Pereira on this one just because I think it's going to be a striking match. I think um, Michelle Pereira's striking is better than Santiago's. Santiago's definitely a harder puncher, but Michelle Pereira does have a chin, especially at 170. Uh, I don't think uh, Ponsonibio is going to be able to put him away, and I think Michelle Pereira should just um, probably win the decision in that one. I'm going to go with Michelle Pereira by decision. It's actually uh, even odds right now, so that's a pretty good bet. Michelle Pereira, but uh, Santiago is no joke, man. He's a he's a savage. He's a guy who knocked out Gunnar Nelson. I mean, it was a bit of controversy with the eye poke, but yeah, that's gonna be that's probably gonna be your fight of the night right there. And uh, yeah, I think Michelle Pereira should get it done. Just a better striker overall. And then in the main event, we got Holly Holm versus Ketlin Vieira. So usually I don't bet women fights just because uh main reason is I've had bad luck with women fights, uh, betting on women fights. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stay away from betting on women fights because it's just not working out well for me. However, this is uh, your main event, so I will give you my prediction on it. Let's see. Holly Holm minus 210 favorite. Wow. So Holly Holm's a huge favorite in this one, which is pretty surprising because she is 40 years old. Ketlin Vieira, I know she beat Misha Tate her last fight, but it wasn't the greatest fight. Um, yeah, Ketlin Vieira, I don't think she's going to be able to take this fight to the ground. Holly Holm's takedown defense is pretty good. And Ketlin Zvira's takedowns aren't the greatest. So I think Holly Holm should probably piece her up on the feet. You know, super well-rounded striker, uh, world champion boxer, and kickboxer. So even at 40, um, that's the thing. She is getting old, older with age, but I think this matchup should favor her. And I'd probably expect this fight to go the distance. I think... Um, 90 something percent of female fights in the UFC go the distance. And I think this one is probably one of those fights, but I think Holly Holmes should get it done. Probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Holly Holm by decision on that one. So there's your picks. Um, no ice picks for this card. Just not the greatest card, but there should be a couple banger fights on here. 